happy summertime everyone. I thought I'd keep it casual and take it out here to our homeowners beach here in the beautiful Florida Keys. Welcome to my channel and thanks for joining me. My name is Melinda Van Fleet and I'm a certified life and business coach, mentor, consultant, certified a high E70 energy practitioner and a human design coach. So welcome. I want to share a little bit today about an incredible experience I had having a kundalini activation with my friend Vivi. And I thought it would be fun to share a little bit about that also in conjunction with an Ahai session from me. And <laughs> one of the crazy things about the internet, as I'm sure we can all agree, is there's lots of information out there. There's a lot of narratives and often it's extremely confusing and overwhelming. And you know what, sometimes just not the greatest information. So when I met Vivi at an event in Coral Gables through the Women's Club, it was a cacao ceremony. I met Vivi and she told me what she did. And I said to her, I said, oh, I bet you, you come up against some narratives because Kundalini and Kundalini awakenings and Kundalini activations sometimes have a little bit of a negative vibe out there on the internet, which I knew as being someone in this lane for quite some time isn't necessarily true. And the reason that you may be hearing that, you may not fully understand why. <laughs> so I thought it would be good to personally try having an activation because I'm curious and I thought it would be just a really fun, enlightening experience, which it was. And then I could share a little bit more with everyone out there. So the first thing I want to talk about is Kundalini has history in Hinduism. And I'm going to put a link in the notes for a YouTube video from a very, very, very amazing YouTuber. His name's Aaron Apke. And I don't know Aaron, but I think he has incredible videos and he does a really great job of explaining things. So I'm just gonna leave it to you if you wish to learn more and watch his video because he does a really great job of explaining kind of, let's say the history, the mythology, however you wanna put it, um, behind actually a Kundalini awakening and Lord Shiva and Goddess Shakti. And he just does a great job with that. And I don't want to butcher it. So I'm just going to leave it to him. <laughs> but for me, I want to start off by saying that it's super, super important to understand why you are wanting to do any type of energy work. What are your intentions? And also know that each experience is going to be different. Even if you think about it, if you've had tarot card readings before, right? Your tarot card reading from one reader may be completely different than another reader based on just how they are, how they manage the call, how they are developed as a reader. Some are just very intuitive, some are more psychic. You know, there's just lots of factors that go into that, different levels in my opinion of their journey in terms of um, their awareness and also how they communicate, right? So you have to think about that in terms of knowing that um, working with any type of energy healer, even if it's within the same modality, you're going to have a different experience and that is completely okay. I think that's amazing. And you're gonna learn so many different things from all these different experiences. So that brings me to point number two. <laughs> energy work is not a one and done. It is not a one and done. It is just like going to gym. You have to keep going if you wish to build the muscle. And it's likely you've heard that before. So I just wanna make sure that I'm really crystal clear in this video. So when I started doing energy work years ago, I was working with a coach who is offline. She is off the grid. And I would say I worked with her every three months. So our calls were very intense with a lot of information, a lot of actions that I needed to be doing and taking. And this was information that was coming from my guides through her to me. And I would say it took about three months between each ascension, right? And as I got stronger, as I cleared through sadness, as I worked on triggers and judgment and comparison, that timing sped up to be like once a month. And now 
I'm attuned with a high, so I can do whatever I need to whenever, right? So I really don't work with her anymore, even though I, I love her, I think she's amazing. They don't work with her anymore because I can get my own information in Intel. And I, I do work every day, constantly, throughout the day. Constantly throughout the day, I know the questions to ask, I know the tools, again, I use a high, and um, I can do things myself. But it took a while to get there, and that's what's really important to understand. It took years of work and dedication and personal development, just again, like you're going to the gym to get there. So I think it's really, really, really a false narrative out there when people think that you're just gonna have like one session, like one Kundalini session, and you're, oh my gosh, all this stuff is gonna happen for you. It's likely not, it's likely not. So it's really important to know that if you are going to start down this path, please make it a dedicated practice with um, the same instructor or you can bounce around and learn and figure out who you really like working with and where you're getting the most um, transformation. But definitely make it part of a regular practice, which is also why I have special pricing called the pass where you buy five, uh, you, you buy four and you get one free. So you get five for the price of four because I think it's really, really important to have a regular energy practice like you would anything else. The other thing that I want to touch on is just the awareness around not having any expectations. I think that is super, super important. And as humans, we all have expectations, right? But how can you be aware of those expectations and turn them into intentions? So when I did a sweat lodge years ago in Mexico with my husband, Ryan, I'm gonna be honest, I had a lot of expectations and I was disappointed. Womp womp. So now I learned from that mistake and now I just go with an open mind, no judgment, and I set intentions. So my intentions for the Kundalini activation that I had was number one, just to learn, you know, just out of curiosity to have that experience. Number two was obviously to have some more, um, whether it's uh, third eye activation, more um, stronger psychic abilities, more intuition, anything like that, I'm always open for. So any type of ascension on that path is great. If something bubbled up that needed to be cleared, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, I was open to that. I'm very good at now looking at things and like, telling them they can go now. So that was really good. And third was just to get to know my friend Vivi a little better and support her and support her online and collaborate with her. I thought it would be really great to learn about what she does and also be able to share her practice with other people that may be interested in having a Kundalini experience. So how was my experience? <laughs> I'm going to be really honest. I was not one of those people that you see online gyrating. I wasn't, I laid really still. I could feel hot and cold, but I can feel hot and cold like in general. Normally when I do in a high session or just meditate, I just get into the zone like that. So I'm like, hmm, like in a whole other place. This was more of a hot and cold experience. And then when she was doing um, different things, like I like um, different tools she was using, like her hands to move the energy, um, drums, bells, etc. Like I could feel some hot and cold then, but it wasn't like you see online. So I want to stop that negative, that narrative right now there, because some people get a little bit nervous with that. That may or may not happen for you. So what's really, really, really important to know in this journey and why there's a negative narrative out there is because if you have not done the personal development work, i.e., like I mentioned before, clearing sadness, um, trauma, triggers, comparison, judgment, anything associated with the ego or pain, the Kundalini activation may likely stir that up for you, right? It's energy that is moving up from your root and your sacral all the way up into your crown and your third eye. And it's meant to open up your intuition and your awareness and your third eye. But there may be things along the way, right? There may be things in your chakras along the way that it's got to like bust through and it's going to stir up, right? It's energy. It's energy work and it's going to stir some things up. And you may or may not be ready for that. And that's when people have a bad experience. So you really wanna make sure that if you're going into an energy modality like this to do the work, 
that's great, but beware of what it could stir up. So if you know you're someone who's still dealing with a lot of trauma, maybe you've had a lot of bad things happen to you and you haven't worked through them yet, maybe you're working with someone on that, you may just wanna wait on a practice like this. You may just wanna wait. If you think you can handle it, that's amazing. But if you don't think that you can handle it, if you do think it's something that will bother you, I would definitely wait. I even personally have a friend who I have um, talked to her many times about how, not in a pressure way at all, but she was just, she's been very clear, like, you know what, I've got a lot of things going on and um, I'm very interested in what you do, but I think I'm just going to wait a little bit until I'm a little more solid. Totally cool. I respect that personally, and this is just a great example of um, someone whose level of self-awareness is amazing and she is aware that when you do energy work it may be bubbling up some things that may be uncomfortable for you and may make some situations worse instead of better and we really want to make sure as energy practitioners that you have a blissful experience right we don't want you to have a triggered trauma experience where you feel really bad afterwards uh, we want you to have a blissful experience and really be moving for toward forward <laughs> towards the things that you are trying to manifest in your life and in your business so um, that is just super, 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 super important and not very often talked about out there, which is why like even if you Google Kundalini Awakening, which I did, <laughs> there's like all these things that kind of make you kind of nervous and kind of scared. And I really don't believe that you need to be nervous or scared. And I'm going to explain in general what the process was so you understand that too. And also in conjunction with the high. But um, generally, if you've been doing personal development work, if you're really good at recognizing your triggers, your ego, any trauma, anything that needs to be healed, I, I believe that likely you're going to be fine. I'm not a doctor. I do not make medical claims. I do want to say that, but it is likely, but again, something that you should just use your own discernment and awareness around. So the two um, actual sessions, if I compare the Kundalini to an Ahayi session with me, are um, very similar in a couple ways, but also very different. So I'm just going to walk you through them. And again, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, every practitioner is different. So what I do is likely not what an Ahayi, another Ahayi practitioner or healer does. And what my friend Vivi does may not be what someone else does that also does a Kundalini activation. So just know that. But I think it's good for some people to just kind of have a little bit of like, well, what, what, do, I, what do I do? Like, what's going to happen to me, right? <laughs> it's really, really simple. So for the Kundalini, I laid on uh, my yoga mat. And Vivi was super nice and brought an extra thick yoga mat. So it was a little more cushy. And I laid on the yoga mat on the ground just in case I did have movement. So I had originally said to her, would you like to use my massage table? And she said, you know, I'd rather have you on the ground just in case there is some movement so I don't fall off. So pretty smart, right? And um, it was really sunny out. So in order for me to be relaxed, um, I did have a blindfold on and I just laid on the floor. And it was um, an hour long. The actual session was an hour long. Before the session, we signed um, a release form similar like you would do working with me with a high in that she's not a medical practitioner and um, just some other things that you have to sign. Totally normal, very common in the coaching world in general, let alone in the spirituality lane. And then um, she explained generally, you know, just keep an open mind, um, just some general things. Um, she didn't really dive into the history of it, but I, I knew a lot, so that was totally fine. And then I um, laid on the, the mat for an hour and just tried my hardest to keep my mind free and clear. Her music choice for what she does was amazing. It was a really cool music, but it was nothing like what I use for a high or what you would go to maybe a yoga studio or a sound bath. It wasn't, uh, let's say, like a typical relaxing. It was an energizing music, right? Because she's moving the energy up your up your body, up your chakras, up your spine. So it was not, <laughs> that definitely was different and not what I was expecting. It was very cool music. I, I, afterwards, I was like, that's a really cool playlist. But it wasn't what I was expecting. So in general, I would say, even though I'm really, really, really good at clearing my mind, 
Um, uh, she said people get used to it. I don't know. I, I don't know if I would necessarily get used to it because it's all various songs. It's not just like one continuous piece of music. So it does start and stop. But again, it's very cool music. And again, I could feel her moving around me. I know from watching her videos that she moves her hands to like move the energy up. And she has various tools, like I mentioned, like drums and bells. Um, but that was really it. That's it. It's so easy, right? It's so easy. I'd have to do anything. People associate Kundalini with sexual energy. Um, that's a whole other rabbit hole you could go down. It, it's not about the typical sex like we think it is. It's the tantra. It's the, the holding it in so the energy goes up. And we didn't even talk about anything like that. So it's just very, um, which is fine, which is great. But I also think it's really good in case you're like looking at someone's Instagram and you're like, oh, that's like, you know, because people do get like kind of judgy. It was, it was totally fine. It was good. <laughs> it was just like an energy session and with some fun music. It was really like great. And then we talked a little bit afterwards and I told her about what came through, which I'll share with you in a second. In comparison and a high session with me is we start off very similar I do explain a little bit about high I do explain like how you should be during the session and if it's one-on-one -on -one, it's 20 minutes versus an hour so 20 minutes that you get to bliss out um, if, if you're with me you're on a massage table um, my experience is completely hands-off her experience she did have some light touches on um, some pressure points throughout but that was it, kind of what you would have in a new yoga class, very similar, um, same type of thing. In mine, they're completely hands off because quite frankly, I do a lot with my mind. So um, I really administer the high through my third eye as a conduit, as a channel, and I ask and see what comes through. So my 20 minutes that you're with me, that's um, really quiet and relaxing. It's either to my meditation music, or if you're on Zoom, you're playing your own Choose, chosen music so it can be sound bowls or something like that so very relaxing and actually after the 20 minutes people are normally like oh my gosh it was so amazing that it was just relaxing and peace and quiet without my kids and and my phone ringing or whatever so so people always appreciate that and then afterwards for like a good half hour or so I'm actually doing a personal reading with you so with your permission I actually see what comes through from the guides for you based on the intentions you have given me prior to our session. So this is a little different in that she didn't ask me what my intentions were, she's just moving the energy. I personally had set my own intentions because that's just how I am and I know to do things like that and so I'm giving you that suggestion as well. But with a, a high session with me, you're actually sharing your intentions, two intentions before we have the session. There may be a very light conversation around it. I, I'm not looking for a lot of information. I don't want a lot of information because I like to see what comes through. And then after the 20 minutes are over, we do a little exercise that's fun. And then I share what comes through and it's a completely enlightening, transformational conversation. So kind of like energy worker meets psychic channel meets life coach. <laughs> so you're gonna get a lot from me in that session that truly will have lots of tips and tools, everything that comes through from your guides, um, I share and then um, pepper in some other things that may come through intuitively or just based on my 3D experience that you may think could, that uh, may be helpful to you too. So very, very, very different, however the same. I would highly recommend doing both if you're on the fence both in my opinion are like amazing and different experiences and the more again the more you do this energy work over time more magical things will start to happen for you more um, ideas will come through you'll feel more at peace your whole nervous system will be more regulated more things will manifest quicker because your nervous system is regulated this is such an important thing that you know everyone talks about manifestation and Ay, ay, ay. Some teachers are amazing. I will give them that. But some teachers, I'm like, what's going on, right? So definitely, you want a regulated nervous system. You want to be happy. 
you want to be in a state of flow. So when you work with someone who is like me, that's an energy practitioner slash psychic slash coach, you're gonna get the best of both worlds with some true tips and tools and strategies to help you get to that place, right? Because you're sharing with me what's your intention or like what's wrong. And we're trying to move you forward through that. So, so that is what I would say there. So what came through for me? I know you're dying to know. So I'm gonna be really honest. I did in a high session before because I'm just an amplifier. I like to amplify everything I possibly can. So I did a high session on myself before and again was really clear with my intentions. I had my Anagi crystals around me and I was just super, super intentional with the practice. So during the actual session, sorry, it's playing. During the actual session, again, I have tools and tips that I use to clear my mind. And then also to, I ask, you know, what, what do I need to know? What do I need to know? And a couple things happened. So neither were surprises, I'm gonna be really honest, but at this stage in my journey, like nothing really should be a big surprise <laughs> because I do so much work. So I just like further validation, moving up, you know, further in terms of evolution. So what happened for me was the first thing that I'll say that's a brief thing was the word Mexico came into my brain and I wasn't thinking about going on vacation. So there you go we need to take a little vacation. So Ryan and I are really hopeful that we can sneak away, maybe within, um, who knows, when our schedules are so crazy and they're gonna get even busier. But um, maybe within the year, maybe within the next few months, who knows, we'll play it by year. But that definitely came through. Mexico is a really, really special place for Ryan and I. If you followed our journey, you know when we were laid off, we went down to Mexico and that's when we came up with the whole strategy to move here to the Keys. So Mexico is a really big deal for us. And then the other thing that came through was really kind of funny. So many, many years ago when I started doing all of this work, the coach that I mentioned that's off the grid and was behind the scenes helping me, she kept saying that the message that she was getting from my guides for me was to stretch to stretch she's like stretch your shoulders back stretch your chest and she kept telling me like on every call and honestly I thought it was just like about stretching I was like okay I gotta stretch all right whatever so I would stretch but probably not the greatest and this would go on so last year when things started to really kick into gear and I was very clear of a lot of the things I had worked through I started to get like I wanted to call them I call them like energy puffs and they would happen when I was meditating and they would happen involuntarily. So I can't even like imitate it because it just would happen. And I would say it would happen maybe every two to three times that I was meditating. I'd get like this weird puff that would just happen. I don't I really don't know how to explain it besides that. So when I joined Christina Rice's channel collective, um, she does a Q&A once in a while and when I had just started, I think it was in the late summer, I asked her on a q and I, I explained, I said, I have this like weird, like puff that happens when I meditate. And she personally didn't know what it was either. So she asked the guides and the guides were like, Melinda needs to speak up more. So it was more about speaking up, owning my voice, speaking up. And not from the fact of like liking my voice, I got over that years ago, but more from the path, the path of like, owning my power. I am someone who only has one gate and channel in my throat. And I've talked about this before on my podcast. I only have the 2343, um, I think I got that right, 2343, freak genius in human design. So I'm not a really talky person, even though this YouTube video is kind of long, <laughs> but I really kind of just get to the point. And I'm not someone who really talks people's ear off. I'm kind of like this and I move on. So that has been excellent, but in the same time, I also, it holds me back. So a lot of that packed into like owning my power, owning my voice. Um, one of the reasons why I changed the podcast to You Have the Power Too was to really um, own that, really own that. So what came up and literally came up during the Kundalini activation was this like 
coughing into my face. And it was really fascinating. And it happened definitely three times, maybe five. I, I wasn't truly counting, but I can kind of remember. And it would just kind of like, it was kind of like <laughs> you were going to throw up, but not, you didn't feel like you were sick and going to throw up. That's the best way I can say it. It was really weird. So it was the energy just releasing, right? So the energy is coming up my body and coming in through like my face to speak, to speak more. So it was very fascinating because I asked, I was like, is this about speaking up more? So from what I gathered, it was. And so there you go. So I'm supposed to speak up more. So I held to it in terms of doing this video <laughs> to open and honestly share about my experience. So I hope it helps other people out there, whether you're on the fence, whether you had a bad experience before and you were curious as to why, because again, getting information is sometimes really challenging on the internet. A lot of people are not forthcoming and a lot of people just honestly don't know. So getting some clear information of why something may or may not have happened for you is um, helpful as far as I can see. And I'm grateful that I can provide that service to others. And um, yeah. Yeah, so I would do both experiences if I were you. You can reach out to me. You can send me an email at melinda at melindavanfleet.com. My prices will be going up um, likely August 1st. That's kind of the date I feel um, really called to. And at the moment, and we'll see how long this lasts too, I'm still doing general free high sessions over Zoom. It's not streamed to any other platform. It's not recorded, so you have to be on live. And after the a high session, it's a Q&A if you have metaphysical questions. Um, the questions can be about energy work, questions can be about journaling, meditation, things like that that help the collective. It's not a personal reading. It's not a personal reading like you would get if you um, work with me one-on-one. -on -one. That is very different and a very different way for me to work with the energy. I'm just being a general channel for the energy versus tapping in and um, doing more of a reading, very different. So anyhow, so reach out to me for any of those things. I will put all the information and links in the show notes and everything's always on my website, melindavanfleet.com or you can follow me on Instagram, melinda underscore vanfleet. So thanks for watching. Please share this video and please like, subscribe, comment. I would love to hear your comments and I hope this helps someone out there. Thank you so much, bye.